Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I don't really use the Python docs all that often anymore and instead rely on a thing called TypeShed because I find it to be much better. Anyway, let's jump into it. Um, now, I do want to preface that TypeShed does not give you any sort of semantics about how arguments and other things in functions will work and you know, can't include disclaimers like this, but I still find it much more effective for writing code. Um, and I just picked an arbitrary example here of URL of request and URL of error. Yeah, I know you probably want to use some other library, blah, blah, blah. It's good enough for a lot of things. So the other day I was writing some code using URL of request dot request, URL of dot request dot request. And I wasn't sure about the type of a particular parameter, this data parameter here. And I can scroll through this and sort of find this whole blob about it and slowly read through it. Must be an object specifying additional data to send the server or none. Okay, well, what does this mean? If no data is needed, blah, blah, blah. Requests are the only ones that use data. Supported objects include bytes, file-like objects, and iterable of bytes like objects. Okay, so I had to read all of this to find out what the types are, which is a lot. And if I'm writing code, I, I want to know immediately, and that's like the important thing to me. Um, another thing that I was looking at was URL of error. I wasn't sure how to get the integer HTTP code out of uh, a URL error. I knew I was catching this. I didn't know how to figure out what the status code was. And sure enough, there's a code attribute, but I wasn't sure if the status code was an integer, and the docs don't even tell me that. They tell me I have to look at base HTTP request handler dot responses. And if we go here, uh, two tuple short and long code still doesn't tell me if it's an integer or a string. Not great. I can assume it's an integer and I can try it out until I find one, but that's too slow. I really need to know what type it is. And yeah, you know, this could probably be you know, updated to say that code is an integer and short message and long message are strings. Like that probably could be helpful in these talks, but that's not the point of this video. This point of this video is this great resource called TypeShed. Now, TypeShed is generally used by static type checkers. It includes type annotations for the standard library and some third-party libraries as well. And this gets bundled into all sorts of different type trackers uh, and IDE extensions too. Like I know PyCharm also bundles a copy of TypeShed. Um, I mostly use it through MyPy and as a source of documentation. So I want to walk you through, at least given the current structure of this repo, because it has changed several times over time, um, at least given the current structure of this repo, how I use this to find type information about, uh, in particular, the standard library, but it's also useful for other third-party libraries as well. And for that, I usually go to GitHub or I have a clone of it on disk or, <laughs> and this is the cheeky way to find it, if I want to look at the current version that I have, for instance, in MyPy, uh, it will live in vmlib MyPy TypeShed. So you can also look at the, the bundled version for in MyPy in this particular location in your site packages. Um, but the important part of this is it has a standard lib directory. It also has a stubs directory. Stubs includes stuff for third-party libraries, but I'm not going to go through those today. You can follow them the same way as you would follow them in uh, the standard library. However, note that these are the PyPI library name and not the actual module name. So for instance, uh, google-cloud-ndb has uh, a top level with you know a little bit of metadata and Pi I files for that particular library. Uh, but let's look at the standard library since that's the part that I'm trying to demo today. And we were specifically looking at urlib error and request. And very clearly, if we open up this and look at URL error, well, actually, HTTP error. Does it even say the right error type here? Oh, yeah, HTTP error. OK, I said URL error in the video. My bad. Um, if we look at HTTP error here, you can see very clearly that code is an integer. And then I didn't need to do any of that splunking through the docs and come to that place where it didn't even have the answer that I was looking for. I can find directly in here that code is an int. And so I know, you know intuitively it's an integer, so it's the data code. It's going to be like 404 or 500 or whatever number that the server returned. And so this is uh, way better than having to hunt around for other stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy about this. Uh, if we look at URL request, for instance, 
class request, we can see here that data takes underscore data type. Underscore data type is a type alias for readable buffer supports read bytes, iterable bytes, or none. Um, readable buffer, I happen to know, is also an alias for buffer. <laughs> buffer being anything that supports the buffer protocol, so bytes or memory view or things like that. Um, but to me, these these pi i files are a lot more a lot more helpful in figuring out what types I need. Um, now you might ask, what is a pi i file? I believe I might have covered that in a video. Let's see. There's a full list of videos at github.com slash code explains. I use this to search my videos because YouTube search kind of sucks. Did I cover pi i? I did not. Okay, well then we'll briefly cover pi i here. A pi i file it looks like a Python file and mostly uses Python syntax. However, it's intended to just be type information. So you'll see like any of the assignments here, you know, usually just have any or particular values here. There's a lot of very compact, succinct code. The functions don't have implementations, they're just ellipsis. Uh, classes often don't have things filled out for them. And basically, it's it's like a very compact way to just, just have type information. And type checkers will use PyI files to supplement any inline type annotations in Python files. So for instance, you know, you might type annotate your code in line by putting parameter and return values in your Python files, um, but you might have a third party library that doesn't want to do that. And so instead they'll either ship a PyI file alongside their Python files or some third party will create PyI stubs for them as well. And uh, I use the word stubs over and over and over. That's, that's how I refer to them as stub files because you know, they don't actually have implementations. Uh, but type checkers will pick these up and use them to uh, provide types for those particular modules. Now, uh, there's there's a bunch of nuances about whether a type checker will pick a pi i file or not over the actual implementation. I'm not going to go into that here, but just know that they generally contain type information, and um, I find them really useful. Anyway, this is sort of a long-winded way to say, like, I find the Python docs not that great. I wish they had type information like this, and I find that often I just skip the Python docs entirely and go straight to TypeShed to figure out what what types things take or don't take. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.